Now, whenever we deal with large data sets, there is always the possibility that some of the values may be missing. So, for example, we may have information about many people, and let's say 10,000 people, and for each person we have information, let's say, on 20 different attributes, like name and date of birth and, you know, gender and annual income and so on and so on and so on, right? So, let's say there are, you know, so many different attributes. It is unlikely that we will have the values for every single attribute for every single person. Right, some of the values are going to be missing. That is, values, things whose values we do not know. So, for example, there may be somebody whose annual income we do not know. Okay, now that's not the same thing as saying that the annual income is zero, because zero is a specific number, it has a value. If you don't know it, you just don't know it. It's missing, it's a missing value. Right? So, whenever we are dealing with data, it's important to think about how we are going to treat missing values or at least have a representation for them. So, in this lesson, we'll be looking at recognizing unknown values in our outputs or uh, explicitly creating unknown values. These we don't really have to do, but for practice, we'll be doing it. Most importantly, we want to diagnose problems that arise when certain functions are used on vectors with missing or unknown values and then of course we'll be using the na.rm argument to ask functions to ignore missing values and finally there is a function called ease.na to test if a given value is known or unknown okay so here's an example of a data frame and here's a value that is being displaced profit profit is being displayed as na or here also it's NA and here we've got employee count being displayed as NA. Okay, That means these are things uh, for which we don't know the value. For example, for this company called DEF Inc, we don't know the profit of that company. It's unknown. We cannot just replace it with zero for analysis because that will be extremely misleading. So for example, you're calculating the average. You put a zero there, that's going to pull down the average, not going to be right. Okay, So it's not the same as zero. So, NA represents a missing or unknown value. So, here we are just simulating it by saying that is a vector and within this vector we have thrown in an unknown value, an NA value, a missing value. Okay, and then we do length of that, which is how many values are there in this vector. There are six values in the vector, so 3 plus 3. It's just that one of them happens to be an unknown value, but there are six elements in the vector. One of them is unknown. Okay, so when you compute length, it's going to calculate, it's going to treat NA as one of the elements. So if I do dat of 1, I'm going to get 10, which is the first element. If I do dat of 2, I'm going to get NA because the second element is missing. It's an NA. So whenever you see NA, that means it's a missing value. Now, interesting point is about how the system operates on NA values because after all, you've got a numeric vector, you've got some numbers and you've got some NAs also sitting in together. What happens when you try to perform operations on NA? So, for example, here I've got this vector with one NA sitting in the middle. If I do that 1 plus that 3, it's fine. I'm saying add up the first element and the third element and it's going to work fine. I get 40. But if I try to use the second element, that 1 plus that 2, so the first element is known, it's 10. The second element is unknown. So if I add something to an unknown element, the result is going to be unknown. Okay. So if you've got a missing value and you try to perform certain arithmetic operations on them, you're going to get no results. You're going to get a missing value as the result. It's indeterminate. So here again, we've got this. If I do sum of that, that is add up all the elements of the vector that, obviously, it cannot do that because one of the elements is unknown. So you're going to get NA. On the other hand, if you want to tell the system, please do this addition while ignoring the missing values, you can always pass this argument NA.RM equals true. Right? That means you're saying, please remove NA.RM is remove missing values and then you perform the operation, it works fine. You get the actual total without the NA being included. So and of course, you have seen the same thing in the context of the mean function. That's exactly what's going on here. If I just did mean that, sorry, no result because there's an unknown value. 
If I say mean that na.rm equals true, I get a result. 